Hello, my lovely morbid and creepy friends. How are you today? I hope you're having a lovely one. Um, if you're new here, hey, what's up? My name is Liz, and this is Korean Crime Time, where I'm your host. I talk about a true crime story, and I create a work of art at the same time. So if you're interested and you want to support my channel, hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button. I don't know what it does, but apparently it does something. And uh, let's get those videos out there so you get more of you guys can see all the awesome content that I have. And by the way, this is the 25 Days of True Crime. So if you're still really interested and you want to follow along, again, hit that subscribe button. And let's get into today's truly strange case. Like, truly strange. <sighs> Yowza. Yowza. Like, so I've noticed too that you guys really like my unsolved cases, so I'm going to add a few more of those into, like, into the 25 days. Sorry. I'm trying to get my stuff all uh, situated. <laughs> Alright, that's better. So, today's case we're going to be talking about is Thorness Christensen. If you don't know who he is, now this is a solved true crime case. And I mean no disrespect for anybody that knows like the victim's families or anything like that. I mean no disrespect. This is more of an educational thing more than anything else because I find true crime fascinating so does other people. So let's let's dive in. So he was born on the 20th of December 1957. Yeah. I saw a picture of him like shit he looks like he looks like the big show or like Andre the Giant he's a like he looks like a big dude he was born in Denmark so what's what is the big like tagline about him is that he's a Danish American uh, serial killer and he was in Solvang California uh, and that and his, uh, his mode of killing was with a gun. He liked to use a 22 caliber pistol. That was his, that was his jazz. Yeah. So. <sighs> he was born in Denmark and he immigrated to the U.S. with his parents when he was five. Uh, the family initially settled in Inglewood, California, but then they would move to Sullivan, California. And this is where his father, Nis, ran a restaurant. Now... Christensen was a great student until his junior year of high school, and this is when he began to neglect some schoolwork. Um, he would move out of his parents' house, he would drop out of school, and then he would begin working as a gas station attendant. So he just like was like, nah fam, I want to, I just want to work. So during this time, he was also, like, he gained a lot of weight, and eventually he would like, gain up. He would weigh like 275 pounds. He was a big dude. Like he was tall and he was thick. Like thick. Yes. So Christensen would become like he would obsess over fantasies of shooting females and having sex with their corpus corpses. If that turns your stomach, click out of this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Remember, we're talking about true crime. There, bub. <laughs> so, he... He would steal a twenty two caliber pistol from a friend, and he would... And with this, he would commit his first three murders. He then moved to Oregon. He lost weight, and he moved back to Santa Barbara County. And this was to complete his high school diploma at a junior college. So Christensen would move into an apartment in Galetta with a woman in her 20s that they met while she was hitchhiking. Christensen would commit another murder during this period. Secondary, like, sources, secondhand sources would indicate that Christensen's M.O., uh, during this period was to meet his victims while they were hitchhiking. He would shoot them in the head with the 22 caliber and then sexually assault them post-mortem. So full-on necrophilia is happening. Maybe he just had to think, maybe, you know, maybe he's like Jeffrey Dahmer where he just like, he didn't enjoy the sex while they were alive. He wanted them to lay still. 
Do you think, maybe, do you think, or is that just like too awkward? I don't know. I'm weird. So let's just like, let's continue it. Okay. Shall we? Let's just continue it. So although several young women were disappearing in Isla Vista, California in the late, in late 1976, Christensen's first confirmed victim was Patricia Marie Laney and she disappeared on the 18th of January in 1977. So the next day her body was found and this was her body was found on an isolated road in Refugio Canyon and this is in like the Santa Inez mountains in northwest Isla Vista near Rancho del Cielo. Uh, Jacqueline Ann Rook's body uh, was found the day literally the day after Laney's was found. Yeah Mary sorry Mary Ann Saris's body was found on the 22nd of May in 1977, and this was near Los Almas. Um, no. Her body was found near Los Alamos. Uh, Laura Sue Benjamin's body was found in a culvert in Angeles Forest Highway, which is like on the Big Tijunga Road in the San Gabriel Mountains, north of LA. So all of these bodies were being found near the mountains. Uh, she was apparently a prostitute. Christensen then shot his fifth victim, his fifth intended victim, and her name is Lydia Preston, in the head um, inside his vehicle on the 18th of, uh, on the 18th of April, 1979. And she actually escaped with her severe injuries. Like she's the only one that escaped. So yeah. So Jacqueline Rook, she was 21. Mary Saris was 19. Patricia Laney was 21 and Laura Benjamin was 23. So when they captured him, so Lydia, would meet with Christensen again, and this was on the 11th of July in 1979, and this was at a bar called the Bottom Line Bar in Hollywood, and she would report him to the police, and they arrested him because Christensen's address was in Galetta, and the similarity of Preston's ordeal to evidence like with the police and what they had collected from Rook, Saris, and the Laney cases, Christensen became the prime suspect in the, the Isla Vista murders. And after his arrest, the Santa Barbara County law enforcement realized they had investigated him as a suspect, along with like over a hundred other ones in 1977. And they noticed his position of a 22 caliber pistol during an earlier arrest for being a minor in possession of alcohol. So, he would he would be tried for these murders and he was first tried in early 1980 in Santa Monica for the murder of Laura Benjamin. He initially pleaded insanity but withdrew the plea and in June 1980 this is when he pled guilty to the Isla Vista murders. He was sentenced to life to life in prison. So he he didn't last very long in jail. <laughs> The 30th of March of 1981, this is when Christensen died after being stabbed in the exercise yard in Folsom State Prison. Uh, his killer was never identified, and according to his defense attorney, James Westwick, psychiatrist had warned had warned that Christensen would be in danger in prison due to his sexual nature of his murders and his youthful blonde appearance, because, I mean, he was like, he got some luscious locks. He was young looking. I think it's like a Danish thing. I don't know. So the full aftermath of all of this is that Patricia Laney, um, she became a prominent symbol for groups that advocated violence against, like against violence to women. And this was in the Santa Barbara Galetta in the Isla Vista area. She had been a community volunteer, uh, with organizations, that advocated against violence on women and she like there's been a festival in her memory since 1977 it's still active so 
Yeah, that's the case of Thornis Christensen. I know that was a really like short one. He like, man, he's a, that's a special one right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in another episode of the 25 Days of True Crime here on Korean Crime Time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.